Hello everyone, this is Team 8 of Kim Hui Wan, Lee Nam Kun, Cho Ala, and Chan Justin presenting the Hadar Ali Center. Before starting with the core presentation, we have outlined the process management and a weekly plan of the Hadar Ali Center. Starting with the process management, this chart is the process management of irregular shaped buildings. Based on this process, I'll briefly introduce our team's plans for this semester. We'll focus on these four subjects. Number one, number two, number three, number four. This is the summary of the process management. And here is our weekly plan. It is the outline of our presentations for the rest of the semester. We have different topics ranging from the manufacturing of the building's materials to the communication issues faced in the construction of the building. Under this plan, I'll introduce the materials used in the Hader Ali Center today. Starting with the reinforced concrete. As earthquakes are one of the biggest threats to construction in Baku, the building must be reinforced by massive 150 foot long concrete piles buried below the Earth's surface to withstand an earthquake measuring up to a magnitude of 7.0. Thus, reinforced concrete is mainly used to construct shear walls as a partition to separate the main spaces and to support the space frame. It also used to construct the footing of the building. Concrete alone works well in compression, but not in tension. By casting wet concrete around a cage-shaped steel reinforcing bars, that problem can be solved since concrete resists squeezing while steel bars resist bending and stretching. In short, when the concrete sets and hardens around bars, it works well in either tension or compression, and it is ready to be called reinforced concrete. Theoretically, any kinds of materials can be used to reinforce concrete, but the reason why steel is more common is that it expands and contracts in the heat and cold roughly as much as concrete itself, which means it won't crack the concrete that surrounds it as another material might if it expands more or less in the concrete. Number two, steel. The core foundation that the Hadar Alive Center is built upon is a space frame designed by Mero TSK. This space frame acts as one of the main structural parts of the building and is where the interior and exterior of the building is attached to as a skeletal element. The space frame works by having tubes of steel connect at its points called nodes, building a unique truss system that can be used in the center specific design. This structure can be finalized and determined in CAD simulation where they can analyze how the frame would perform in high wind conditions, earthquakes, and different temperatures in the city of Baku. The space frame is built by using steel, although other structural frames can also be commonly use wood or timber. The type of steel for the Hader I Leave Center is not speci specified online, but based on context, a steel that sacrifices weight for high strength and flexibility is used such as mild steel. Because the space frame is essential to the building, there must be preventative measures taken to ensure that the space frame does not fail or corrode in the decades to come. The most important thing is that the steel is galvanized and coded in accordance to DIN EN ISO 12944 standards. In addition, every tube and node that is manufactured is under strict quality control of the accordance to DIN ISO 9001 and ISO 14001 standards. Furthermore, the space frame does not use any welding and strictly uses bolt fasteners. This is because welding can cause less flexibility and have a higher chance of failure through cracking at the welds due to corrosion. Mero TSK space frames offer a high flexibility of construction because it is coupled with a highly automated production line that allows for the components to be fabricated with different geometries in a short amount of time in an economic way. This way, the Hader at Leaf Center was able to save over 2,500 tons of the original proposed design using the space frame. There is about 40,000 meters of steel tubing used for the space frame. The tubes are about 1.5 meters long and 7 meters wide, all unique from each other. During the nine months for the space frame construction of the center, the blue steel tubes were an iconic landmark in the city of Baku. Number three, the Hader Alive's cultural center design achieves the ideas of a continuous architectural landscape by using two primary elements, geometry and materiality. To allow the creation of the unique form design, the glass fiber reinforced concrete and glass fiber reinforced plastic is the ideal material. They are each what we commonly call GRFC and GRFP. In short, GRFC is concrete used on surfaces that are walked upon in the plaza spaces. 
GRFP is used at the roof cladding panels, which are lighter in weight and have a comparable color and surface finish. There are 13,000 unique panels of GRFP and 3,150 panels of GRFC that are used in the building's outer skin. Every panel has its own unique features like single, double, and even triple curvature designs. Each has an identification microchip containing all information relating to that specific panel, 16,150 in total. This provided dramatically reduced installation times and subsequent erection costs. Number four, glass. There are two types of glass in the Haider Ali Center. One is a glass curtain wall, and the other is structural cantilever glass balustrades. Glass curtain wall is unitized, structurally bonded fixed glazing with split mullions and transoms, adapter frames, and vertical cover profiles, suspension points at tops of the unit. The climate of Baku is with heavy winds blowing very often, hot and dry with considerably low precipitation in the summer, and cold temperatures of up to negative 10 degrees C in the winter. So windows are comprised of PVB laminated glass with 6 millimeters tempered glass combined with solar control coating and low E coating externally. It reduces cooling and heating costs by cutting off external heat energy and reducing heat losses in winter, and protects exhibits and museums by blocking ultraviolet rays. Also, when glass is broken, pieces of glass do not scatter, reducing safety accidents in the event of a disaster. The semi-reflective glass has an important role for illumination. During the day, it reflects light, constantly altering the center's appearance according to the time of day and viewing perspective. At night, this character is gradually transformed by means of lighting that illuminates from the interior onto the exterior surfaces. For the strength test of the glass, here are the results. For safety reasons, glass balustrades had to be equipped with durability and a lighting system. So it is made of laminated extra clear glass, LED luminaires, and bus bars integrated with laminated glass. Thank you.